So now let me move to mathematical challenges. Um, and so this gets back to this no child left behind. So um, there was some recent news uh, about the National Science Foundation having published a study um, saying that girls have caught up in math. And this is really, um, really important because you know, for many years, uh, so, so for many years following, well, uh, let me actually get to that in a moment. So this was based on No Child Left Behind data. So, so the history of why this became really exciting to the media was Larry Summers' remarks a few years ago, um, who was then the president of Harvard, Harvard commenting that women may lack as much intrinsic aptitude as men in science and math. Um, and as a female mathematician, I didn't take it personally. <laughs> Um, I was actually at Harvard as an undergraduate, um, and I felt that uh, what Summers missed was the tremendous influence of um, underlying assumptions about women and how, that, how negatively they affected young women who were interested in science. Um, but in any case, without kind of addressing that, I actually spent some time to try to evaluate the validity of this this remark back a few years ago. Um, and, uh, and so it was kind of exciting when National Science Foundation came out to show, in fact, they've caught up in math. Um, but to say a few more words about Larry Summers, because I'm going to get back to the National Science Foundation and their report, and this gets back to the normal curve. Larry Summers actually was not saying that women on average are worse than men on average. Okay, so what he was talking about was how v the variation compared which is to say boys, according to Summers' argument, would lie on this green curve, which is to say, and girls would be on the red curve, so that's to say their averages are the same, but boys had a lot more kids who are way out here doing great math than girls in terms of intrinsic ability, and uh, also potentially did a lot worse than girls at the lower end. Um, but what uh, Summers' argument was, if you actually looked at it, which was not at all the way it was presented in the press. The way it was presented in the press was that uh, boys were somehow just better than girls. And what I think most people would get from that is that on average they're better. But what he was in fact saying was that Harvard was interested in making hires out here, a few standard deviations from the mean, <laughs> And uh, because, in fact, he was talking, even worse, he was talking to a group of women engineers about the question of why Harvard didn't have any, have, had so few faculty who were female in the sciences. So again, uh, there weren't very many women to choose out far away from the mean. That was Summers' argument. Um, so again, moving back to here, oh, sorry, I wanted to, uh, so moving back here, now we can see why it is that the recent news that girls have caught up um, really didn't take any, um, anything away from Summers' argument. I mean, it was kind of presented again in the press that, boy, now we showed Summers, in fact, girls have caught up. Um, but let me even say a little bit more about that. Oh, yeah, so I, I guess I, let me just finish this comment here, is that um, his comments were based on the idea that boys perform out, uh, better than girls um, far from the mean on standardized tests such as SATs. So again, we're using SATs as a proxy for uh, the ability to do great science, which is a fairly poor proxy. And then we're making a comment about the variation, not about the averages. So let me just say about the response of, uh, to that. Um, academics were outraged. and. Uh, many of the people, um, especially women, but not only women, who are at Harvard and MIT nearby, um, were, 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 uh, uh, felt, as I did, that Summers spoke from a history of sexism. And this, these kinds of comments echoed comments made about blacks in the past, also unfortunately at Harvard. And in fact, there was not a very strong correlation. You guys may remember the bell curve. This was a book that came out. Yeah, OK. So um, there, there wasn't a strong correlation between S SAT performance and winning tenure at Harvard, OK? So you know, it's just a real stretch to sort of interpret something about SATs and come up with a statement about tenure at Harvard. You know, what does it take to get tenure there? Incredible commitment, incredible luck, incredible ability to work with other people, incredible talent at science, maybe not incredible test-taking skills in a three-hour period. Maybe not. 
Um, which isn't to say SATs don't tell you something. It's to say, what do they tell you? Not, not tenure at Harvard. Um, what was the press response? Um, well, there were a lot of people who came out saying, look, free speech is dead. Can you believe all those academics who are upset at uh, Summers' remarks? Um, and that's academic freedom. He should be allowed to see what, say what he wants. Um, and I think uh, they also wrote a like lots of different newspapers, wrote a series of articles about what are the biological differences between men and women in the brain. Um, they interviewed teachers at magnet science schools. You know, what do you think about women in science? Um, and they poked fun at themselves about you know not being able to balance their checkbook. That would be kind of like me poking fun that I I can't actually make it through a novel. It's not really that funny, 